So in the final part of our uh, talk today, I want to talk to you about the uh, coordinate map uh, that uh, it's kind of hiding in the background of, in what we've been talking about. So another way of looking at what we're doing is we are taking a vector v inside of our vector space and um, we're associating to that vector a new vector in Rn. So this map is called the coordinate map and the way that this map works is that we're taking a vector inside of our vector space and we map it over to the b coordinate. So what's important here is that the basis is fixed once b is fixed. So once we fix a basis for Rn, and then we can actually take a map that assigns to each x exactly one vector in Rn. And that's where the unique representation theory theorem is coming in, is that each vector gets associated to exactly one vector. And that's another reason why that first theorem is so important, because that means that this map is is actually a function. We don't have x going to many different choices. There's only one thing to send it to. Now it turns out this is actually a very nice map or function. It actually has more properties that, that are quite useful. So namely, once you fix a basis of your vector space v, then the coordinate map, which we just described above, which takes a vector x and sends it to the b coordinate, is has the following two properties. It's it's, it's a, well, actually it's more, but three properties. It's a linear transformation. Okay, so the, first of all, that's very in, interesting because we get a, a nice map between vector spaces, but more than that, that is one to one and onto. So it's a very special type of linear transformation between V and Rn. So this map where you're taking an X and associating it to the B coordinate is actually a nice map between vector spaces because not only is it one-to-one, -one, it's also onto. So before we wanna go further, I wanna introduce a new term. So an isomorphism between vectors, oh, not vector vectors, that should be vector spaces. Let me fix that for you. Between vector spaces, V and W, is just a linear transformation from V to W that is one to one and on to. So that's exactly what we have in the previous theorem. So as a corollary of this, we have that the coordinate map is an isomorphism, okay? Is an isomorphism. And mathematicians love things that are isomorphic because really what happens when things are isomorphic is that because it's one-to-one -one and onto, everything on the V side is associated to exactly with one thing in W and vice versa. So in some ways, they're actually the same vector space. They just have different labels. Okay, so isomorphism implies the vector spaces are the same, just have different labels, or maybe we'll call them names. So if two vector spaces are isomorphic, it really means that they are the same vector space. So let's look at what's happening here, is saying that if you have a vector space with n, it was a basis with n elements, your vector space really looks like Rn. So this is really useful because it says at some point you could cook up a map so you could think of everything as belonging to Rn. And that's part of the reason we start linear algebra with the study of Rn, because any vector space can somehow be identified with an appropriate sized Rn. Now I, I'm waving over some details here. Uh, when the detail is that assuming that all your scalars become from the real numbers. If things were over the complex numbers, things become a little bit more, uh, become the statement changes slightly.
but for the purposes of this course, everything is over the real numbers. So let me just give you an example. Here we have a basis for P2, right? And it's the standard basis, one T and T squared. So whenever you take a polynomial inside of P2, it can be written as A0, A1, T plus A2, T squared. And with respect to this basis, notice that, oh, let me make a point here, is notice that we can rewrite this as A0 times one plus A1 times T plus A2 times T squared, right? So these are the basis elements right here, and these are the scalars. So this implies that the B coordinate of this polynomial is a0, a1, a2. It's simply the coefficient of the polynomial. So the map that we have, the coordinate map, is, is given by taking a, any polynomial and mapping it to the coordinate a0, a1, a2. And not only do you have a coordinate map, this is an isomorphism. So is an isomorphism. So one way to think about it, what's happening here is that P2 and R3 are the same vector space. Right? Because over on the R3 side, we always think of the three tuples. So we're thinking of storing three numbers in a three by one vector or a three by one matrix, I should say. But notice in the P2, you're really doing the same thing. You're storing three numbers, but you're storing the three numbers in terms of the coefficients. So you have this one-to-one -one correspondence between the polynomials and the vector space R3. And so, it's just a different labeling, but they're basically the same set. And it's just how we store the information differently. So you could actually push this further. So in fact, Pn and Rn plus one are isomorphic. Uh, so I haven't really said what isomorphic is, but it just means that there's an isomorphism between Pn and Rn plus one. So these vector spaces are really the same thing. So key points from today's lecture is we learned what a B coordinate is. We learned what some of the graphical meaning of a B coordinate is. And we've also introduced the concept of an isomorphism. And we've seen some examples of things being isomorphic. So that's it for lecture 23. Uh, in the next lecture, we're going to start talking about the Gram-Schmidt process, which will t lead into notions of good bases versus other bases. Uh, I'll see you at the next lecture.